MSLA or resin 3D printers come in all shapes, sizes, and price points. And for newcomers, figuring out which one to start with can be the first big hurdle. Today, we're breaking that down by putting three very different machines head to head. The $500 Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra 16K, the $1,000 Hay Gears Reflex RS, and the $3,500 Form Labs Form 4. We're going beyond just the specs. I'll compare their features, overall ease of use, including software printing, cleanup, post-processing workflows, and the types of resin each one supports, plus print fidelity, accuracy, and speed. By the end of the video, you'll have a clear picture of what you're getting at each price point and which of these machines is the best fit for your specific workflow. Let's get into it. It's the money. Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems, and today I'm comparing three 10 ish inch resin 3D printers that cover a wide range of price points and capabilities. The $500 Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra 16K, the $1,000 Hay Gear Reflex RS, and the $3,500 Form Labs Form 4. All three use the same core tech. MSLA or mass stereo lithography, which cures liquid resin layer by layer using a masked UV light source. What separates them is how well they execute that process and how much control, convenience, consistency, precision, and detail they offer. At the entry level, the Elegoo delivers speed and high resolution, but at the cost of accuracy, reliability, and ease of use. The Reflex RS trades a bit of resolution for a better print success rate and a more streamlined workflow, though it is locked down. And the Form 4 offers pro-level precision and automation, but you're paying a premium and you're locked into the Form Labs ecosystem unless you spend even more to unlock third-party resin support. It also lacks the pixel density for ultra-fine miniatures, despite its price. I've already done full reviews on each of these printers, so check out the descriptions if you wanna go deep. In this video, I'll compare them head-to-head -head covering setup software, print quality, post-processing, and overall usability using a real-world prototype project, building an ultra-light gaming mouse plus some high detail tabletop minis to test fine detail and durability. Before we dive into the comparison, it's worth touching on a few issues I uncovered in my original reviews, especially with the Elegoo. The Saturn IV Ultra 16K had major adhesion problems, mostly due to Elegoo's auto leveling system, which works by pressing the spring loaded plate against the screen until it flattens out. It's a brute force method of leveling, but my plate was slightly warped. No amount of force was gonna fix it. It turns out this wasn't a one-off issue. Other reviewers like Battle Brother Sam and plenty of customers ran into the same problem. I ended up replacing the build plate with one intended for the Saturn IV Ultra 12K. Same plate, just without the grip wings, and it's worked perfectly since. Adhesion is now consistent across the entire surface, although there's still a bit of flex on one of the corners during leveling. I cover all of the leveling challenges in more detail in my full review. The Hay Gears Reflex RS didn't have any hardware issues in my testing, but did run into software restrictions. At launch, the slicer required users to be online and logged into account to function, and the selection of compatible resins was both limited and pricey. Since then, Hay Gears has added offline slicing and expanded the resin catalog with more options, including more affordable picks, which I'll be testing today. Now let's talk software, and there are some major differences here. Starting with Elegoo, they do have a dedicated slicer called Satellite. I tested it during my original review of the Saturn IV Ultra, but at the time, it didn't include any resin profiles for the 16K. Fortunately, Elegoo printers are open, so you can use whatever slicer you prefer. I use Chitubox Basic, which has the Saturn IV Ultra 16K in its printer list. Setup is just a matter of adding the printer, then importing a resin profile. I use Soraya Tech resins for testing, and they provide pre-built profiles for this printer. Their fast ABS-like profile were great out of the box, with a quick calibration check, but I got a little too confident and skipped calibration with their blue nylon resin and ended up with a full plate of failures. 
And that's the trade-off. You have full control over settings like exposure times, UV intensity, and layer transition, but that also means you need to dial in every resin manually if you want consistent results. With the Haygear's Reflex RS, it's the opposite. The Haygear slicer is designed to eliminate calibration altogether. You pick your printer, the resin, and the application type. Currently, just one option for the RS. The layer height, and that's it. There's no exposure settings to tweak, no room for fine tuning anything. It's locked down, but that's what makes it so reliable. In all my time using it, I've only had failures due to bad support placement on my part, not slicer or printer issues. It just works. And while it's built around Haygear's own resins, I've successfully used a variety of third-party resins with no problems. Then there's Formlabs Preform, which combines the best parts of Blueprint Studio and Chutubox into one seriously refined package. The printer links to your account during setup, so when you open Preform, it already knows what printer and resin you're using. Try to slice with the wrong resin, it'll warn you. Choose your layer height, usually between 100 and 25 microns, depending on the resin, then import, orient, support, and slice. It's simple, it's reliable, and outside of the default support settings being a bit overkill, the results are nearly perfect. And if you want advanced control, you've got it. Preform offers more customizable settings than any slicer I've ever used. You can build full custom resin profiles with a ridiculous level of granularity. The catch is there has to be an official Formlabs resin bottle in the printer. No bottle, no print. To really test dimensional accuracy, I approach this like a real world product development project. The goal, print an ultralight gaming mouse shell designed to house the internals of a Logitech G305 Lightspeed. I bought this model on Etsy and then tweaked the model, tightening the tolerances for injection molding using ABS, and this prototype is meant to validate the CAD model before investing tens of thousands of dollars into mold tooling. So this isn't just about whether the parts look right, it's about whether they are right. Each of the printers handles the peel phase part of the cycle where the cured layer is separated from the vat in different ways, and that directly impacts both speed and dimensional stability. The Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra uses a tilting vat. Instead of lifting the build plate straight up, the vat tilts to peel the print while the plate rises. This reduces suction, which speeds up the print, but also introduces mechanical stress. Pair that with Elegoo's auto leveling system where the build plate is pressed into the screen under spring tension and you've got a recipe for compression artifacts if anything's slightly off. And that's exactly what happened. The first mouse prototype was visibly warped. The top and bottom shells didn't in line. Internal tabs were off by about a half a millimeter and most holes were oval. I reprinted at the slower standard speed and got better results, but it still couldn't achieve a proper fit. Electronics mostly fit into the shell, but the side buttons were misaligned and the main buttons had no travel. I even switched to Formlabs Creator Series Tough Resin, and while that helped reduce surface distortion, there was still enough compression at the base to make the print unreliable for tooling validation. The Haygear's Reflex RS uses an optional $700 pulsing release module that alternates air pressure under the release film to gently detach each layer. It's a clever system, but it only works with some of their resins, and my first attempt to fail due to, well, expired resin that was on me, but switching to Haygear's new water washable prototyping resin yield clean looking parts until they warped after curing. I tried again using their pale purple resin, and this time the result was nearly perfect. The long flat surfaces showed no real compression ripples, every hole was round, and the electronics fit within spec. However, the bottom part was about 120 microns short of its actual dimensions, and there was a tiny front seam gap. Not good enough for tooling validation, but for in-house prototyping or mold making, 
it's perfectly acceptable. I also printed the model using their new PVC-like flexible resin, and the result was a strong functional shell that could be easily used for low volume production. Then there's the Formlabs Form 4, which uses a low force display with a textured surface that lets air channel under the release film during peeling. This allows the film to tent and reduces suction without stressing the part in the peel mechanics. Lift height, speed, and even secondary motions are fully adjustable in the software. The system self calibrates too, so there's minimal user intervention needed. The Form 4 was the only one that printed a fully functional prototype on the first try without requiring tuning or resin swaps. For an engineering workflow, that kind of out of the box reliability is tough to beat. It printed the mouse shell to exact spec. Every dimension I checked was within 10 microns of the CAD model. The long flat base printed at exactly its designed 123 millimeters with no bowing or compression. I also printed a version using the Tough 2000 resin, which I supported in the Hay Gear slicer and exported into Preform, which made support removal so simple. And even before cleaning up the support remnants, the parts snapped together perfectly. I've been using one of these mice printed on the Form 4 for a few weeks now. Tough 2000 for the base, Form Labs clear for the top and the buttons, and so far it's held up great. So when it comes to accuracy for engineering applications, the Form 4 clearly delivers. The Reflex RS with the right resin comes close enough for confident in-house low volume production. The Saturn IV Ultra, while fast and high res, struggled to deliver consistent dimensional accuracy in my testing without tuning. With enough trial and error and possibly a perfectly parallel build plate, it could get there, but it's not ideal for precision work out of the box. Now, I went into detail on the wash and cure stations for each printer in my full review, so I'll keep this part brief. My post-processing workflow is pretty much the same across the board. I use 3D printed mounts to angle the Elegoo and Higgear's build plate so excess resin can drip off, then scrape the print straight into initial wash bucket, which conveniently came with the Form 4. Thanks to the Form 4's flexible build plate, removing prints is also the easiest. Just give it a bend and the prints pop right off. No prying or scraping required. Once rinsed, I remove supports. The Chitu box supports are good at default settings and great if you spend time to tune them for your printer and resins. And Hay Gear's automatic supports are basically magic. They just peel away cleanly with almost no scarring. Support removal is where the Form 4 struggles most. Even with adjusted touch point size and density, they're still the hardest to cleanly detach. I've gotten around this by exporting supports from Hagear Slicer and importing them into Preform, which drastically improves cleanup. Now, here's the thing I hate most about resin printing, and that's the resin. It's sticky, toxic, smelly, and just messy. Cleanup is bad enough, but switching resins, it's even worse. Both the Elegoo and Hay Gears follow the same process. Carefully pour the resin back into the bottle through a filter, then slowly clean out all the leftover resin without turning your workspace into a disaster zone. And the Saturn's build plate design makes that cleanup even harder. Form Labs, on the other hand, actually solves the messy resin problem. Each resin gets its own dedicated vat and mixer, complete with a lid for a sealed stackable storage. When it's time to switch, just pull the vat, mixer, and resin bottle, drop in the next set, and the printer instantly detects the resin via RFID. No pouring, no filtering, no risk of cross-contamination. Now, each new vat and mixer costs $125, which adds up quickly if you use multiple resins, but for me, the trade-off is worth it. It eliminates one of the messiest parts of resin printing. If you'd rather save the cost, you can clean and reuse the vat, but the plug-and-play system is definitely more convenient. With that out of the way, let's dive into the next print test. Now, while dimensional accuracy definitely scales with price tag, fine detail is a different story. On paper, you'd expect the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra with its 16K display to blow everything else out of the water. The Reflex RS has an 8K screen, and the Formlabs Form 4 only uses a 4K panel. I went into this fully expecting a straightforward result, higher resolution, equal sharper prints, but after running detailed prints in a variety of resins, 
things weren't so clear. For this test, I focused on both detail and durability. I've never been a fan of the fact that to get the absolute best detail from these machines, you usually need to use the most brittle resins. I don't care how sharp a mini looks if the sword snaps off the moment it hits the tabletop. If someone shows up to my Friday night session with a broken character model, that's a house rule malfunction penalty. Roll a d20 on attack and on a natural one to five, that busted weapon fails or glances off harmlessly. Anyway, for these tests, I picked resins that strike a balance between detail and toughness. Resins you'd actually want to use for tabletop minis, and at first glance, the results were confusing. The sharpest looking prints came from the Reflex RS using their new PATH 10 resin. In terms of detail, reliability, support removal, durability, and cost, PATH 10 is probably the best resin I've used so far for miniature printing. The Form 4 printed in Tough 2000 came in second, despite Form Labs telling me it's actually one of their weakest resins when it comes to capturing fine detail. Their gray V5 does produce noticeably sharper results, but it's also more brittle, especially compared to Hay Gear's Path 10. There's no chance these Tough 2000 minis are losing a weapon mid-battle though. Surprisingly, the Saturn IV Ultra, despite its 16K display, came in last, whether using the Soraya Tech Fast or even the Form Labs Tough resin. The Soraya Tech prints clearly had issues, Despite confirming my settings, there were visible print defects, possibly due to the resin not playing well with Elegoo's high speed print mode, but I reprinted again in the standard mode and I just got failures. As for the tough resin on Elegoo, it printed cleanly, but the detail was soft, even with full calibration. Now, pulling some prints from my original review, I can confirm the Saturn IV Ultra is absolutely capable of stunning detail, but only when paired with a brittle, high precision resin. But that's pretty much par for the course. Stronger, more flexible resins tend to be thicker and don't cure as sharply, which softens fine details. So what does all this mean in practice? When it comes to printing durable tabletop ready miniatures, all three printers delivered solid results and the difference largely comes down to workflow and user preference. If you're on a tighter budget and don't mind a little tuning, the Elegoo Saturn IV offers the highest resolution of the bunch, great for detail focused hobbyists who want maximum flexibility with resins and slicers. Just be prepared to spend some time dialing things in and know that the best results often come from more brittle high precision resins. The Hate Gears Reflex RS is ideal for users who prioritize reliability and simplicity. It's locked down, sure, but it just works, especially for game ready models or multi part prints that need to fit together well. If you want great results with minimal effort and don't care about tweaking every setting, this is the printer that'll get you from model to mini with the fewest headaches. It's the one I reach for most in my day to day workflow. As for the Form 4, look, I wouldn't recommend it just for miniatures. That's not what it's built for. But if you're already using it for product design, prototyping, or engineering grade parts, it's absolutely capable of pulling double duty as a high end mini printer. With the right resin like Tough 2000, you can get good detail and excellent durability, though you'll pay for it at $149 a bottle. If you're using pre-supported models, make sure they have solid rafts. I've noticed that models like the ones from DM Stash, which use thin perforated grid style rafts, often fail because parts of the raft don't adhere properly. Adding a solid raft that's at least 1.5 millimeters thick completely solves that issue. And finally, while Preform offers an impressive range of fine tuning options, anti-aliasing isn't one of them. You can only toggle in on or off with no control over intensity. Therefore, you might see more voxel or layer lines, but a single coat of primer takes care of that and leaves you with a nice clean model. So whether you're a budget conscience tinkerer, a plug and play perfectionist, or a professional user who occasionally moonlights as a dungeon master, there's a printer here that fits your workflow. All right, guys, this has been a long ride and honestly, I could keep going. I actually cut a thousand words from the original version of this script. Hopefully this helped highlight some of the real world considerations when choosing an MSLA printer based on your workflow, your budget, and what you actually need from your machine. 
I did power through it, so if you have any questions, ask. I'll do my best to answer. If you got something out of this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more deep dive comparisons like this, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.